Hey, welcome back again. Uh, this is Reggie, the washer, dryer, repair nerd. Um, we're, we're covering the dryer. Uh, the symptom today is if you have a dryer that turns, spins, does everything it's supposed to do with the exception of heat, if it doesn't get hot at all. Now, I do have a video right now on if you have a dryer that gets warm or it gets, you know, gets hot, but for some reason it takes two or three cycles to dry the clothes. There's a whole other video. Um, if you look at my channel, uh, please subscribe while you're at it. Um, please refer to that video. But this video is for if you have a dryer that uh, turns as everything it's supposed to do except get hot. Like it's completely cold in there. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. Uh, the dryer we're using today is a Whirlpool brand dryer. Um, they're easy to identify because the, this is what the back looks like. And that just comes right off, screws right off. And nice thing about Whirlpool, everything is accessible. Most of the stuff you need to, you know, all the business is right here uh, to fix the machine. So, um, first things first. Uh, dryer turns, does everything it's supposed to do, just doesn't get hot. So, if, if this, is, this is your situation that you've actually uh, relocated to another place, and it worked at your old place, but you moved to a new place and it's spinning and not getting hot or not coming on at all. Uh, in that case, it's most likely that you're electrical. Uh, if you look at my, I have a video on my page where it shows, I show you how to actually test the electrical um, to make sure you get the right amount of voltage. Um, because if it's a three prong or four prong cord, no matter what it is, uh, the dryer in total requires 240 volts to actually operate. You got 120 volts that are dedicated to the operation of the dryer, spinning, turns the motor and everything. And then the other half solely goes to the heating element. So yeah, you'll still get operation, but you'll get no heat if you don't get the right amount of voltage. Um, so but uh, most of the, so if that's not the case, you're in the right place. Um, first thing we do is um, let's identify the things that turn off heat. Um, you have your, uh, up top here, there's a thermostat, which is called your high limit thermostat. This thermostat uh, is a safety mechanism. Uh, basically, it, it turns off all the power, uh, turns off all the heat if uh, it's, it gets too hot, if it overheats. Uh, so typically, if the drum temperature on the inside or the heating element, and this little section here gets too hot, it turns off to prevent a fire, which is good news. Um, so just be aware, because you get some repair guys that will come out and just bypass that fuse and charge you 200 bucks. Um, you know, I, I got a thing. You don't want to just cure the cough. You want to cure the cold. You want to figure out what caused the cough. So this is just a cough. Your cold would be something else. So if, um, but typically what makes this go is overheating. Um, overheating can happen from your heating element grounding out, which I'll cover in a second. Uh, or your temperature regulating given out. Now this temperature regulator basically does, it regulates the heat inside the, the element. Uh, let me turn it off and take it off so I can show it to you. So it regulates the heat inside the element. Um, I've got another one already ready to go. Um, so when that goes, sometimes it'll go in the on position or off position. If it's on the on position, off position, uh, it, it'll keep the then basically the heating element will, will keep going. It won't stop. And so without a without stopping, it overheats, it gets hot, and then uh, it will trigger that fuse to go off. So the heat regulator on this particular model looks like that. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, that's it right there on this model. And then there's another, look at my bag here, that'll look just like this. So that regulates your heat and your temperature. And I don't have a thermostat, so I'll take this off and show it to you. Um, so anyway, the whole point is you want to change both of those out, not just one. Um, because you can spend, you know, I think it's about $20, 30 uh, I see on Sears, uh, parts dot com. Um, so it's about twenty thirty dollars uh, for one. 
So maybe out, you might be out 50 bucks, uh, but it's worth changing this. Even if it works, just change it because uh, you had to go through all this and then, you know, this, this blows again, then you're out even more money. So and this, this was it's your high limit thermostat. All right, and this basically triggers at 309 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty darn hot. Um, so again, that's, that's gonna protect, protect you from, from catching fire, your house from catching fire, so that's a good thing. Um, now, another issue that might happen is if your heating element grounds out. So if your heating element grounds out, what that basically means is there's there are coils inside here. Let me show you the heat on it too while we're at it. There are coils inside here. So this is your heating element. And so sometimes these coils will break and will touch the frame or touch the side here. And if they touch, the circuit is completed. And so with a completed circuit, this will actually stay on, even if the dryer is in the off position, which is scary. And you, you dry me off, you'll see this glowing red light in there. Um, that's your heat on the grounding out. So if that happens, that will also set this fuse off. Um, so a way of testing that, I can show you right now. Again, if you're not familiar how to use a multimeter, you look at my other... Um, tutorial on how to use your multimeter to test your dryer. So basically, again, you want to remove one, remove one of the leads. Set it to continuity. This is for the buzz. And you have continuity there, which is good. That means your element works. And you touch the frame. If you touch the frame and it beeps, you know, or you get, it shows continuity, then that means that element is grinding out and the coils are touching. Uh, and that's what's setting that off. Uh, so that is pretty much 98% of the probability of what of the reason why your dryer is not getting hot. And if your heat element goes out, there's a few things that can contribute to a heating element going out. Because it should last about anywhere from 5 to 10 years. depends on how you use it. Um, but one thing that will speed that up is air restriction. Like if your, your, your vent hose, uh, your vent exhaust isn't good. Uh, which I do have a video on how to clean your dryer. Please look, check that out on my page. And uh, please subscribe while you're there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So... Uh, you check your high limit thermostat for continuity. Uh, if it doesn't show continuity, then you check your heating element. And if that doesn't do the trick, uh, it can be something more advanced, such as a timer, uh, which you know I'll have a video on that soon, showing you how to check your timer and actually how to clean the contacts. In a, in a, get your timer going, but that's high level stuff. At that point, you might want to call a technician or just replace your dryer. Um, so, if there's any questions, feel free to leave uh, notes on the bottom of the page. Um, other than that, I'll see you on the next repair. Thanks.